Hey everyone, Mulligan here, and welcome to the Xenon portion of my legendary crafting guide. As always, if you're new to the game or just getting into Constructed, you're probably wondering what legendaries you need to craft first. This series is aimed towards answering that question for you. Because of that, each video will focus on a single two color faction. I try to be as informative as possible with the cards I talk about since I feel that going fairly in depth and giving a little history on how they've been used in different metagames will help you guys just starting out that want to focus on crafting legendaries for a particular deck. Now for these videos, unless I state otherwise, I mainly focus on well-established decks and within each archetype, I talk about the essential legendaries, which you should always craft first, and then the optional legendaries, which are cards that occasionally find their way into some decks, but are usually metagame dependent. Any legendary I don't mention is either highly experimental, doesn't fit the general game plan of a particular deck, or is just plain bad. Let's get into it. So let's start off with the essential legendaries. And there's two on this particular list. They are Ion the Abductor and Sandstorm Titan. Uh, let's talk about Ion first. Uh, he is a three power, three, three unit requiring one time and two shadow influence to play. He has lifesteal and ambush and an ultimate where you pay nine to silence a unit in your void, then play it with plus three, plus three. Ion has proven to be a staple for any Xenon deck, even the three color versions where Time and Shadow are the main factions. If aggro doesn't have removal or another combat trick for this guy, he will practically brick wall them. His ultimate is costly, but often relevant in slower Xenon decks, getting things back with much higher stats than normal more than makes up for the silence drawback, at least in my experience. I actually can't believe people weren't running four copies of this card in their Xenon decks at first. There are people that still have doubts on Ion. Uh, you need to craft four of these for Xenon, by the way though, trust me. Next, let's talk about Sandstorm Titan, a four power five, six unit requiring two time influence to play. He has endurance and while he's in play, units can't fly. And the best four drop in the game is back. Again, for the final time, uh, you get almost triple the normal stat points for a four drop with abilities that are pure upside. Uh, it's safe to say that this is a core card in practically every mid-range deck running time cards and is what makes up time's identity as a mid-range faction. With Xenon, it's no different. Uh, the only Xenon deck that doesn't always play Sandstorm Titan are Life Force decks of the two and three faction variety. And there still isn't a standard variant of Life Force decks yet. Just like every other guide I've done where this guy shows up, Crafting four copies of these is required. You just can't go wrong with these, even if you're not playing Xenon and instead want to play another time deck. Let's move over to the optional legendaries. And as far as these go, uh, all of these are specifically found in Xenon control decks or what some have dubbed uh, big Xenon. Uh, these aren't really, these aren't found in life force decks, at least not at this time anyway. Uh, but there are three optional legendaries, and they are Mystic Ascendant, Vara Fate Touched, and The Last Word. Let's talk about Mystic Ascendant first. Uh, this is a six power, four, four unit requiring one time influence to play. Uh, when Empower is activated, he gets plus two, plus two, and you draw a card. Uh, there are arguments you could make for this card to be an essential legendary when it comes to Xenon, but I wanted to play it safe. That said, I haven't seen a Xenon control deck that didn't run this card. Time and Shadow don't really have much when it comes to cards that just give you pure card advantage, so this is really the best option Xenon has when it comes to a card draw engine. Uh, the fact that Ascendant buffs himself means he doubles as a game ending threat if not dealt with. Uh, every Xenon list I've seen that uses this guy runs four copies of the card, so that's the amount I'd recommend. Besides, he's used in other decks running time as well, making Ascendant a good investment. Uh, next, let's talk about Vara Fate Touched. Uh, she's an eight power six, six unit requiring three shadow influence to play. Uh, she has deadly, and when you play a shadow unit, including Vara, play an additional shadow unit from your void. So we go from a card that is seen in pretty much every Xenon control or big Xenon list to one that almost no one has used. When it comes to Vara, I can only speak from my own experience using Vara in Xenon Control. She's pretty good, 
she will end the game in the right situation. Emphasis on the right situation because Vara faces the same problems in Xena Control that she does in other decks, probably more so. Uh, sometimes you don't have the right unit in your void to bring back that would help your situation and sometimes because you run fewer units than other faster decks, you don't have anything in your void to bring back at all. Uh, Vara is fine in Xenon Control, especially if you want really want to try and stick it to Armory, but Xenon doesn't exactly struggle against Armory, and there are other win conditions you could use, like the next card I'm going to talk about. Anyway, I'd run two copies of this card if you really want to use her in Xenon. Of course, you should only craft one since you will get a copy of this card for free by finishing Vara's portion of the opening campaign. Let's talk about the last word. Uh, this is a 9 power 1-1 one, one relic weapon requiring 3 shadow influence to play. It has deadly and quick draw and an ultimate where you pay 9 to make the last word's attacks deadly to players. Uh, so we're going over to a card that is used in Xenon Control more often than Vara is but not as often as Mystic Ascendant. Uh, for control decks, this is typically used in combination with Azendel's Gift in order to beat other control decks that have more late game power than you do. Uh, Xenon is no different. My personal concern with this card in Xenon is that the faction doesn't have a ton of card draw to go digging for it, unlike Felm. And while Xenon can protect the weapon with its units, there's no Aegis effects in the faction to protect it from direct damage, unlike Felm. I express that concern because like Felon Control, the Xenon Control lists I see that have this card typically only run a single copy of it. Now, you could run more than one. People have tried it, but not with much success as this card is very expensive to play at 9 power. At the end of the day though, you can't deny that this card is an excellent win condition since it can end the game immediately. Finally, I wanted to give an honorable mention uh, to Shadowlands Feaster. Uh, this is a 7 power 5 6 unit requiring 2 shadow influence to play. It has flying and ambush, and when an enemy unit dies, it goes to your void. Uh, this one is also a card that I can only speak about from my own experience trying it in Xenon Control. Uh, I haven't seen any other list running this card. Uh, it can combo pretty well with Vara, though granted that is matchup dependent. It's also decent tech against Armory since none of their relic weapons do 6 damage at base power. A Shadowlands Feaster also beats Akaria 1v1, leading some to give it the nickname the Akaria Killer. Uh, it's definitely not essential for Xenon though, and you don't need to craft these anyway. Uh, you can earn 4 copies of them playing through the Jex Bounty campaign. And that is it for the Legendary Crafting Guide. Uh, if you're just starting out, let me know if these videos were helpful to you. Hopefully I've pointed you guys in the right direction since the goal of this series was to help new players decide on what legendaries to craft. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a like. If you have any suggestions or just general feedback, let me know in the comments section below. Also, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss the future eternal content I put out. And if you missed the previous videos in this guide, feel free to check out the ones for the factions that you're interested in playing. Uh, there will be a link to the, that playlist on your screen. Uh, thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this, and I'll see you all soon. Take care.